Take your Bible, turn to Revelation chapter 9, if you would. Revelation chapter 9. Good to be here this morning. <clears throat> I guess I was so excited about coming to church, I woke up at 3.30 this morning. Yeah. I've been, I'm kind of into that right now. I, I go to sleep and sleep until about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and then I'm wide awake, and I don't like it. I don't like it at all. All right, Revelation chapter 9. How you doing, Roy? All righty. Uh, Revelation chapter 9. I've got up on the deal there, verse 16, but I want to go back. to. We're going to open this, uh, or we're going to sound this sixth trumpet. Um, verse 13. So go back there, if you would, and we'll read down... Uh, to verse 21, we're going to get the gist. Of, there's something that God says here that, uh, to me, it, it really is it's very important, and it's really part of the world that we live in right now. Uh, Revelation chapter 9, verse 13, the sixth angel sounded, and remember, the, the sixth always, it, I, I mentioned how the number six is a number for preparation, and if you look at the, the, the scheme so far in Revelation, when the sixth seal was opened, that always sort of prepared the way for the seventh one. The seventh one brought in uh, the trumpets. And it's the same here. Um, the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. We learned a little bit about that. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for four things, an hour. Actually, these deal with time. And uh, the fourth dimension that I mentioned, I think, last week is, is time. It, it relates to time. Which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, which is two million, and I heard the number of them. Now again, some scholars have that as an earthly army. And I don't. I think that is a, an army of very, very mean devils. Look at verse 17. And I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire. Well, that tells you something right there. If you're wearing a breastplate and it's, kept, it's caught a fire, you don't wear it very long, do you? Breastplates of fire and of jacinth and of brimstone. Fire and brimstone. Can you name a place in the Bible that was destroyed with fire and brimstone? Yes, Derek. Sodom and Gomorrah, a very good young man. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. Horses with lion heads. So these are, these are devils. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. I think um, Hal Lindsey, who wrote the late great planet Earth, I think he tried to make these out as, as tanks. I think so. And uh, you know how tank has fire coming out the the barrel of it. He said, these are tanks. Nope. Wrong again, Hal. Yeah. And I used to really, I'm, boy, I read that book, Late Great Planet Earth, and I'm, years ago, and I went, wow, this is fascinating. This is really good. And uh, no, no, I think he's wrong. Verse 18. Now, here's where we're going to get into the important thing. By these three, notice that we're dealing with the third part a third of the men, a third of the people on the earth are killed. And, and it's by three things. And the number three, of course, it represents the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It represents resurrection. Christ was uh, resurrected on the third day um, and so on. But it also represents sin, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Those three things is what Eve was 
uh, tempted with. Those three things are what Christ was tempted with, yet he was without sin. And this does have to do with sin. And we're going to read it. It's in the text. Watch this now. By these three was the third part of men killed, by fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. It's interesting that they're killed with smoke. Uh, which incidentally, most people that die in house fires die of smoke inhalation first. Before they're ever burnt, they, they die of smoke inhalation. Verse 19, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of, watch this now, here we go. The rest of the men, after one third of all the people on the earth, have been killed by these devils. And man has no, no way of protecting himself whatsoever. The rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not. Isn't that something? Yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, six things, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Think about it. I got a little story to tell you. Uh, Friday, and I've, Lisa and I had done this before. Several years ago, Lisa and I were checking out at Walmart, and we seen this. He probably was about 19 years old, this kid. And he was stuffing stuff under his sweatshirt as he's walking out of Walmart. And I went over to the person standing there and I said, uh, that guy is stealing a, a bunch of stuff under his shirt. And they said, well, we'll, we'll tell the office, but we can't do anything about it. What? So I did. Lisa and I got in the car and we saw him taking off running toward Crystal City. So we got in the car and I got on the phone and I said, Crystal City Police, yes sir. I called the Crystal City Police Department and I said, we're following a guy right now that stuffed himself full of Walmart goods. And uh, in fact, he's right here beside our car and Lisa rolled the window down and said, we're calling the police on you. And he kept going. He kept going. And finally, when he turned there at Bailey Road and uh, started over there right in front of the Eagles Hall there, the Crystal City's finest, met him. <laughs> Cuffed him, took all the, just pulling stuff out like this. So Friday, I don't, I don't like thieves. Everybody's got their thing, okay? I just, I don't know. The, and especially after we had uh, all half our mail stolen, and we still have not, we still have not had anybody give us any of their bank statements showing that their checks were changed. So as far as we know, whoever was stealing half of our mail didn't do anything with the checks. Threw them away, I guess. I don't know. But as soon as we, I mean, as soon as we move that mailbox, we, we bounce right back up. Yes, sir. Well, I don't want you to tell you a lie. I can tell you that one. Uh huh. That's some awfully expensive baloney. Food, I can understand. Diapers. If I saw some gal stealing diapers, 
I'd probably just let it go. But, you know, if, if it's something somebody actually needed. So we're at Walmart again Friday, and I see this guy come in, and he, he looks sketchy. I don't know, there's just something about this guy. So I just kind of followed him around. And he went over to the hardware section there, back of the store, and I watched him pick something off the shelf, and he, he went to different sections of the store holding this in his hand and acted like he was looking at stuff that this guy would never be looking at. He even went into the perfume section holding this thing. And then he came out and went into the shampoo section. And uh, when he came out of that section, he didn't have that in his hand anymore. And he was wearing this great big baggy sweatshirt. So I just kind of watched him. He started going out the front door. So the guy standing there at the door now that looks at your receipt, I said to him, I said, that guy, I said, I'm pretty sure he just stole something. And he said, well, I can, I can call somebody. He said, but I'm supposed to stay here and check receipts. I said, I understand that. I said, I'm not making a big deal about it. I'm just letting you know somebody's probably stealing stuff. He said, what was he wearing? I said, well, gray, heavy, real big, heavy sweatshirt. And, and he was wearing... Um, uh, a red ball cap and I said we well, went to his car and he's coming back in now I mean he went out to his car I didn't see what he did but he went out to his car for about a minute and came back in and I said well there he is right there of course the guy got eye contact with me as I'm going that's the guy right there so I was I was kind of hoping he would stop and say what are you looking at I would have said I'm looking at the same thing that every camera in this store is now looking at because the, the guy at the front was on the phone talking to somebody and describing them for him. So I guarantee you every camera in that store was on him following him around. It cost us more money. And Walmart shuts down stores where people steal too much because they can't make any money. But notice this in verse 21. God puts it, you can say what you want about theft, but God puts it on the same level as murder, sorceries, fornication, and thefts. Puts it on the same level. What's the difference between stealing a pound of bologna and stealing millions of dollars out of a political campaign fund that you're not supposed to touch? What's the difference? Do what? To send to the Ukraine? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that's theft. Because he's got a deal worked out with Ukraine. And I listen, I, and it doesn't matter if they're, gonna, if they're the king, the pope, doesn't matter if, if they're the sheriff, the governor, and it doesn't matter if there's some petty theft guy that's just stealing something he can sell for drugs. God hates it. Thou shalt not steal. And uh, now let me throw something else in here, too, of a, of a political nature. I want you to... People make a big deal about communism and socialism, and, they, and they're saying, well, you know, that's just helping people out. Help, it helps poor people out. No, it is stealing. It is stealing money, resources, real estate, and so on from people who actually own it. It is stealing it from them. You remember when Joe the plumber asked Obama during the campaign, why, you know, why are you taking my money, my hard-earned money, and giving it out to people who don't do anything? And Obama said, I just think when we spread the wealth around, it's good for everybody. Well, spreading the wealth around, in my opinion, means go out and work for it. Like the wealthy people did. If you don't like wealthy people being wealthy, you're just mad because you're probably not as smart as they are to earn the wealth. But the, prob the idea is it's theirs. They own it. The government has no right to it. The government doesn't own it. And when you take money out of working people's hands, 
and just spread it around to everybody for no reason at all, that's stealing. It's in Proverbs chapter 1. Go read Proverbs chapter 1. They say, let us all, let us all put our lot in, cast our lot in, and we'll use one purse. In other words, we'll all take out of the same till. That doesn't work. The hippies tried it already. The hippies tried it in the 60s and 70s, and it didn't work. Because after a while, the people going out working every day and bringing money back in got tired of everybody else sleeping with their wife while they were out working. So they decided to quit working and sit around and smoke marijuana and sleep with everybody else's wife. And then pretty soon, everybody's starving to death. Doesn't work. All right, I'll get off that now. But anyway, notice in verse 20. The rest of the men, two-thirds of what's left of earth's population does not repent after seeing one-third of earth's population killed by um, smoke, fire, and brimstone. They didn't repent after watching this happen. And they have no power against this army whatsoever. Uh, one of the things that's going on with the whole UFO thing is that it's finally, Congress is finally getting involved in a serious way. Because uh, about a week and a half ago, they interviewed uh, a man by the name of David Brush, who was a whistleblower. He was in Naval uh, or Air Force Intelligence, and he came out and said, yes, we have crashed craft, we have whole craft that works and he said we are back engineering it and yes we have found what he called biologics on these ships and then uh two uh top gun pilots uh, david fravor and um can't remember the other guy's name but they both engaged ufos while on training missions saw them with their eyes engaged them flew after them and report and reported it and um, they're testifying before Congress. And if you lie to Congress, you go to prison. And they're telling Congress this. And, and even, even AOC, Ocasio-Cortez, was smart enough. This is one thing. I'm, I'm going, I can't believe she said that. She's like, in your opinion... Does our current military power have uh, any defense against vehicles that can fly like this? And they said, no. We have no defense. We can, how, can we do, how can we defend ourselves against vehicles that defy the laws of physics as we know them? That can be at 80,000 feet and drop to sea level in less than a second. How, how, can we, how can we even catch up with them? We can't fall that fast, much less fly that fast. And so that's part of it, is that they're realizing that there is no way that we can defend ourselves. And here we have two, this is what amazes me. We have two-thirds of Earth's population watching another third get slaughtered by devils. And yet they refuse to repent. That's not just your average lust sin. That's pride. That's pride. That's being stoic. That's being hard-hearted and stiff-necked. And saying to God, God, you're not going to stop me from doing what I want to do. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, guess what's coming after this seventh trumpet blows? Seven vials of God's unending wrath upon the earth. And people are not going to like God's wrath. Sodom, destroyed. Gomorrah, destroyed. Jericho, destroyed. Um... Where did Jonah go to? Nineveh? Nineveh eventually destroyed. I mean, after that story with, with Noah, they, they kind of, or with uh, Jonah, they kind of did okay. But later on, they got destroyed. Why? 
They wouldn't repent. Wouldn't repent. Turn to Jeremiah 8. Jeremiah 8. Verse 4. Notice this. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back? And this is where we get the word, backsliding. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? What is a perpetual backsliding? Yeah, they, it's one they don't come back from. You just keep going back farther, 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 farther. There's a um, YouTube channel that's got my attention right now. It's a, it's a judge, uh, a lady judge. Uh, down in Texas, and I like her. She is no nonsense, and probably one of the hardest working, fastest working judges that I've seen. Um, anybody that's got to be up against her, I'm sure their lawyer tells them, uh, you don't want to lie to her, uh, you don't want to make her mad. She's not one of these judges that keeps turning people out on the streets no matter what they do and no matter how bad they get. They can get a chance. They can get in drug rehab rehabilitation. There's all kinds of programs apparently down there that she sends them to. But after a while, she says, you know what? Forget it. You're going to jail. You're going to prison for five years. You're going to prison for ten years and signs it and it's done. Over with. I like her. Okay, because we have a system now where judges are continuously just turning people back out, back out on the street, back out on the street, back out on the street. Well, let's give them another chance. Well, it was their, they were raised in a bad home, so it's not really their fault or, or some other thing, or they, didn't, or they didn't have a good education, or we didn't put enough money into the program that they were part of, and on and on and on and on. And that stuff don't work. That stuff don't work. Um, Heard something the other day, uh, I can't remember where it was, it was, somebody I think on Fox News or something like that, but anyway, they, um, they were talking about one of these cities out on the west coast, San Francisco or Oakland or one of them, where the homeless problem is so bad, and, and it's like that in most of the cities now, the homeless problem is so bad, it's, it's all drug addicts. And everything else, and they defecate right out on the street, right on the sidewalk, right in the business district where all the restaurants and shops are, and everything like that. And the city council doesn't do anything about it. The mayor won't do anything about it. Nobody do anything about it. And one city, they said, "Well, you know, we we spent 150 million dollars last year to deal with this problem, and it got worse. And it's because the 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 uh, the I don't want to say companies." But these nonprofits that are out there saying we're going to help these people, they're just taking $150 million and not doing anything. They're getting rich by it, and they don't do anything because if they, if they fix the homeless problem, what are they going to do next year for money? If it actually worked, they wouldn't get any money next year. Don't you see how that works? And so they don't fix the problem, it gets worse, and then they'll ask for more money. We need more money. We need $300 million now. So the city will give them $300 million, and nothing, and it gets worse and worse and worse. Um, but that's, that's, that is perpetual backsliding. Uh, what's the recidivism, Cubby? What is that word? When a guy just keeps going back in jail. Starts with an R and it's got a C in it and a couple of S's somewhere. Recidivism or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who 
Who knows? Who knows? If you get liberal prosecutors and get liberal judges, if you get like that gal that they had up in St. Louis, she won't do anything about it. Yeah? Needs to be. Needs to be. And parents need to stop giving their kids phones. Amen. That's good, Mike. Say that again. I will. Perpetual backsliding. They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rusheth into the battle. Yea, now what? Look what he says. The stork in heaven knoweth her appointed times. Don't birds, aren't birds, that birds got a brain this big and yet they know how to fly south for winter and fly north for summer, don't they? Bees got a brain smaller than that. They know where the hive is. They know where the hive is. They know where the queen is. I watch those channels too. This lady, she's like so... Oh, I don't know how she does it. She's like so nice and soft. And oh, I found these bees. And she just scoops them all in her hand. And takes them and puts them in a thing. And takes them to a nice hive where they can be protected. You know, it takes people like that. And I'm like, I ain't touching that. Yeah, she just scoops them all. She just waits until they crawl up on her hands like this. And she takes them and puts them nicely in there, you know. Bees got a brain that big and they know where the hive is. They know who the queen is. They know what to do and all this stuff. The stork in heaven knoweth her appointed times. And the turtle, the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. And it's all written down in a book for us. It ain't like we have to wait to hear it from somebody. We can read it ourselves. And nobody wants to do that. So verse 8, how do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? And I will tell you, that is your average Jew right now. And I would say your average practicing Jew who goes to temple and reads whatever they read. They believe that they have this supernatural wisdom with God. And they believe that because the, the oracles of God were given to them, that that automatically gets them in with God. And how do you, and God is questioning them saying, how do you, and this is their law, Jeremiah. They had the book of Jeremiah. How do you say we are wise and the law of the Lord is with us? Lo, certainly in vain made he it. And the pen of the scribes is in vain. In other words, they write the scripture out to make copies of it. They read it. They don't live it. They don't heed it. They don't follow it. So, verse 9, the wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? Therefore will I give their wives unto others, and their fields to them that shall inherit them. For everyone from the least, even unto the greatest, is given to covetousness. From the prophet, even unto the priest, every one dealeth falsely. They refuse to repent. They refuse to stop their backsliding. God says the stork and everything else knows their time, but my people, they don't know nothing. And they write the Bible out, and they have it read in their, in their synagogues all over the world, and yet they won't heed it. They won't listen to it. Psalm 115, look at this. This was mentioned in that... Uh, Prophecy there in Revelation. Psalm 115, verse 2. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. I want to, I want to stop right here for a minute. Think about, think about the phrase, their idols are silver and gold, the, the work of men's hands. Um, you, you, 
personally can set up your silver and your gold as an idol. And it doesn't have to be in the form of Mary or Jesus or St. Jude or anybody. You can worship money, can't you? What is the root of all evil? The love of money. Money has ruined more pastors. Money has ruined more churches. The love of money has ruined more than one person's testimony. And it can actually become your God. When it dictates what you do and how you do it. When money determines what you're going to say and what you're not going to say. So, we are hated, apparently by somebody, I don't know, who's, I don't know who's been stealing our mail. We're hated by the Catholic Church out in Kenya. And I mean fiercely hated. Um, dangerously hated. And it's not going to stop me from saying what needs to be said to those people over there. It's not going to stop me. Um, and I know things you don't. But it's not going to stop me. Uh, they're just going to have to hate us and understand that if they hate us, then I'm glad that it's, it's really God they hate, Jesus they hate, and not us. If they loved the right Jesus, then they wouldn't hate us. We'd be fellowshipping with them, we'd be working with them, but we're not working with them. <clears throat> and so... Uh, you, can, you can worship silver and gold and it not be fashioned into anything except a coin or a bank account. Verse 5, notice this. They have mouths, but they speak not. No, no idol has ever spoken a word. Uh, and it's not just Catholics I'm talking about either. There was an epi and I used, to have the, I used to have the video of this. I recorded it. Uh, off of TBN one night, Benny Hinn had Oral Roberts, back before he died, he had Oral Roberts on his program, and Oral Roberts was reminding Benny of, of a time when he was preaching at a church down in Florida, and he said, or, Oral Roberts said this, he said, there on the, on the back, the, the back of the church there, like we have here, was all glass, and he said, all of a sudden there appeared the face of Jesus in this glass. And everybody saw it, and it made a big deal about it. And Benny and Oral are talking about this, and Oral said that, or Benny said that every time he got up to preach, people said they could see the mouth moving on this image of Jesus in the glass. And Oral said, that was Jesus speaking through you. And I'm going, no, what is it? You're lying. So they have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they don't see you. People bow before idols like they would bow before a king. A king will see you, but an idol won't. Uh, they have ears, and people pray to them, but they don't hear them. Noses have they, and all they offer incense up to these idols. They smell not. They have hands. They handle not. Feet have they. But how did the idol get into the place that it was placed at? A bunch of guys had to carry it in. And put it there. Why? Because its legs don't work. Has legs, 
and I, I, every time I, every time I go over this verse, I think of this was on, a, I think America's Funniest Home Videos or something like that. These guys are walking this big statue of the Virgin Mary into this Catholic church. They got it up on a thing like this big platform. They're all carrying it. And they're coming down the aisle and they got to turn like this and take it over to the side of the church. And all of a sudden, whoosh, thing crashes all over the floor. Falls off the platform. And I'm going, if that would have been the real Mary, she wouldn't have needed anybody to carry her in. How powerful is your God that he can't even walk? He can't talk, he can't hear, he can't smell the offering of your incense. He can't do, he can't, he's got an arm, but he can't save you. They that make, they that make them are like unto them, so is everyone that trusteth in them. That means the people who worship deaf and dumb idols are also deaf and dumb and blind and cannot hear. And they cannot save themselves. Amen? Get rid of your idols. Get rid of your idols. And not the ones that everyone sees. I'm talking about the ones in your heart. Ezekiel 14. The ones that nobody sees, but God knows they're there. Get rid of those idols too. Because they're dumb and deaf and blind. And they will not save you. Father, we ask your blessings on your word. Teach us more, Father. We've got a lot to learn in this world and a lot to learn about it. And we thank you, God, that your word is right on, I mean, spot on, right on target. Father, bless it, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, amen.